This year's IBC coverage is brought to you by Yeah, so color management is really important for video editors and here's why. You know, there's dozens of raw and log camera formats out there and each of them have their own bespoke color science. Now, managing and dealing with all this complex color science is a very welcomed task for craft practitioners like colorists, but what we're noticing now is that in an end-to-end -end world where video editors need to do it all, from editing to color grading, sound mixing, motion graphics, the job of color management is just another big part of the workflow that's falling on the shoulders of video editors. You know, so we set out to make a modern, comprehensive color management system that is simple enough for any video editor to use, whether you're a first time Premiere user or a video engineer at a post house. So we came up with the new Premiere color management and we're doing a lot of great things that we've never been able to do uh, in Premiere before. We are color managing raw video for the first time. We're using a wide gamut working color space for the first time. And um, let's just show you folks what we're working with and we'll do a little demo. So first thing, this is an automatic set it and forget it system that's simple for anyone to use. Every time you make a new sequence, you're gonna go ahead and see your sequence settings. We have this new color management tab, which lets you select exactly which preset you want to go with and the presets give you a little description of what you're getting yourself into. You hit OK and you're off to the races. Now, the default we're putting everyone in is called Direct Rec 709. And that's important because essentially it's very, very reminiscent of the way Premiere Pro used to work and the way you're using Premiere Pro. This way with the Direct Rec 709 preset, you're working in Rec 709, you're outputting to Rec 709. All of your legacy projects are gonna open up looking identical and it's not too huge of a shift, right? But the real magic of Premiere Color Management happens when we switch to a wide gamut preset. Right? So I have this timeline right here, and you can see I have some Canon footage, I have some Arri Alexa footage, I have some Sony footage. There are no transfer LUTs being used right now. Premiere Color Management is doing all the work in the background to make this footage look amazing, because we believe that it should be simple to see great looking video in Premiere Pro as soon as you drop footage into your timeline, right? Uh, the, the concept of managing these complex webs of transfer LUTs, we want to think of that as something that we needed to have to do before, but it's no longer required. But if you do want to use your transfer LUTs, we still completely allow it. It's a big app. There should be a million ways to do a million things. And you can disable color management if you want to. You can disable color management for specific clips if you want to. So if you have your own bespoke workflow, your own, uh, your own way of doing things, we fully support that. Either way, so we're going to go ahead and switch over to wide gamut now. As you can see, the sequence settings that we had before um, up here are accessible in the settings tab of Lumetri. And you can see really simply, I clicked on this clip, I can see that I'm working in Canon Log 3. Um, if for any reason, let's say you're working with stock footage that's been transcoded, or any footage that's been transcoded, we might not be able to automatically tag the metadata in, in some circumstances. And if so, it's really easy to just override the media color space. And look at all these formats that we're supporting now from Panasonic, Nikon, Fujifilm, Canon, Sony, Panasonic, Ari, Apple Log, Red, um, pretty much every uh, major cam camera manufacturer out there. So what I'm gonna do now is, let's go back here because uh, we automatically recognize the Canon Log 3. What I'm gonna do now is make a color correction. Let's go over to edit. And I'm just gonna take this clip right now. I can see I have some nice bright sky right here. I'm gonna take my exposure, drag my exposure all the way down to like 2.8, right? And if we look at our scopes over here, we can see the highlights are really smushed. We're not having a good time. This is a pretty unusable adjustment, right? It's, it's, it's not good. We need to completely redo this and think of another strategy to redo our exposure for the shot. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset the color correction. We're gonna go back to settings. And what I'm gonna do now is switch our color setup and switch our preset from direct rec 709 to wide gamut. Now we didn't see any perceptual change in the image, but what we just did is we completely removed the Rec. 709 working color space and we upgraded the entire image and color processing pipeline in Premiere Pro from working in Rec. 709 to working in a wide gamut color space. And the wide gamut color space we're working in is ASUS CCT. Now what's important to know for the pros out there, this is not an ASUS transfer function, this is not an ASUS pipeline. We're simply using ASUS CCT as our intermediate wide gamut working color space. But we are working in wide gamut now. And since our most popular effects, including Lumetri, are now color space aware, 
I can go back to my exposure and I can make the same exact adjustment that I made before. And I'll bring it right back down to 2.8. And now we can see this is what an exposure adjustment is supposed to look like. I have these nice bright highlights uh, reflecting down on the lake right here. I have this nice bright sky, nice shading from shoulder to shoulder, lots of dynamic range, lots of latitude, and I'm working in SDR even. And uh, this is what we should be seeing. If we head back to our scopes, as you can see, we have all the space in the world because by working in a wide gamut preset, Premiere Pro can now actually utilize and take advantage of all that glorious raw and log data in your footage for the first time. So this is what we're talking about when we say that working in wide gamut on this new Premiere Color Management System is a generational upgrade in our user's ability to take advantage of dynamic range and latitude and flexibility to perfect your skin tones and really craft and mold the creative look of your videos. So if we go back to settings over here, just for comparison, I'm going to switch between Wide Gamut and Direct Rec 709, which still gets you all the automatic raw and log transformation, but this is kind of the, 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 the old way of thinking about, uh, about color management in Premiere Pro. So when we're, we're in Wide Gamut, let's switch back to Direct 709. And that's the, essentially the, the former color management system, right? And we can switch back between Direct 709 and Wide Gamut. Look at that improvement. It's incredible. So now when you're using Lumetri, you have all the space in the world to refine your videos, refine your image. We're really thrilled about it. And also, Premiere Color Management really helps color interrupt between Premiere Pro and After Effects. If I hop over here to Direct 709, and I'm just gonna go ahead and right click and replace with After Effects composition. So while After Effects loads up, it's important to know the color interrupt portion of Premiere Color Management works when you're sending clips from Premiere Pro to After Effects via Dynamic Link. That's the important part. Because when you use Dynamic Link, After Effects can now actually utilize and respect and take advantage of the Premiere Color Management settings and the video that comes from After Effects back to Premiere Pro through the live linking of uh, the Dynamic Link of the comp is always accurate and always the same color you sent to After Effects. So we have our comp here in After Effects. We just sent this over from Premiere Pro via Dynamic Link. And I'm just gonna make a little quick adjustment in the text. I'm just gonna say, make a text layer and say IBC 2024, just to make some kind of small adjustment. And now let's hop back over to Premiere Pro. And we can see that here's the live After Effects comp coming back. And the comp looks identical because we were respecting and utilizing all of our Premiere color management settings going to After Effects and then coming back to Premiere. So this helps our users with a very large chunk of improving and perfecting color interrupt between Premiere Pro and After Effects. So to recap, with all new Premiere color management, you're gonna be able to automatically normalize raw video and log formats from nearly any camera to the color space output of your choice. We're going to work in, we're working in a wide gamut working color space for the first time in Premiere Pro, and we have way better color interrupt between Premiere Pro and After Effects with this new system. You no longer have to manage complex webs of LUTs, you no longer have to use transfer LUTs unless you want to. And for anyone that needs to, you can disable color management, use your own bespoke workflows, and use Premiere Pro with as much flexibility as you need to configure any kind of color management setting or workflow that you need at your company, your workstation, your organization. And that's it for Premiere Color Management. Uh, you can access it in Premiere Pro Beta, and the best way to get Premiere Pro Beta is to go to your Creative Cloud app, go to the Beta tab, and download the latest beta version of Premiere Pro to try it out.